Hey everyone, my name's Karma, and today I want to talk about the Valve Mages for CSGO and some of the problems that is associated with Valve Mages um, since 2014 and how some players might be upset over basically how the game has grown so much and yet Mages have been pretty much the same. So let's go through a little bit of the history and then I'll explain how that relates to Dota 2 and how Dota 2 is getting a much better kind of system being integrated for their players compared to CSGO's players and how that can transfer to you know our mages now and what we can do to fix that. So first of all there's been only three sets of mages ever and we're currently in the third set. So the first set was in 2013 where you only had one major which was Dreamhack Winter in 2013. Then Valve tripled the amount of majors, so they went from $250,000 a year to $750,000 a year in 2014. And they had uh, EMS1 Katowice, then they had Cologne, and then they had Dreamhack Winter, all in 2014. And now this year, we're presumably getting the same thing. So we had Katowice again, then Valve announced that Cologne is a major, so they're putting $250,000 into that as well. And presumably Dreamhack Winter will be the last major at the end of the year in either November or December. So basically I think a lot of the problems are that players look at it and they say the game has grown so much and we're still on $750,000 for a prize pool. And uh, I can actually relate to that and say yeah it is a problem. So let's have a look at it. So in 2013, the peak player count in December, which is when Dreamhack Winter was uh, basically on, and that is also the peak number for concurrent players in the year, which is 96,298 players. So that's the peak player count for the entire year. That's when Valve said, we're putting $250,000 into a major, and that's that. And they also had the eSports case. And I think that's where most of the money actually came from, was from the esports cases. Then in 2014, the uh, the prize pool for majors got tripled. And during March 2014, when Katowice was on, the peak player count concurrently was 142,526 players. Then when you fast forward to Cologne, it's 277,192 players concurrently in August. And when you fast forward even further into Dreamhack Winter, we're getting into numbers that are just absolutely extraordinary. It's 348,018 players concurrently in November for 2014. And the peak for 2014 was 367,634 players concurrently playing CSGO. So in that time, Valve made obviously a very good projection and they saw that the player count would probably triple and as a result they tripled the prize money and over that time Valve released a bunch of cases, a bunch of skins and I'm pretty sure they made more than $750,000 considering there is there are websites out there with less than 2% of the skin share and they're making, you know, $20,000 a week profit. Um, so I have no sticker money stats from 2014, but based off the 2015 uh, Katowice stat, it's probably less than 1.5 million for each Valve major, the sticker money. But from that, we can see that from 2013 to 2014, there was indeed a triple in the player base, just concurrently at least, but I can probably say that, yeah, unique accounts obviously rose, so Valve made a lot of money off game sales, then they probably made more money off sticker sales, and then even more money off skin sales. And as a result, they adequately increased the prize pool. Now, when we come into 2015, this is where it gets kind of interesting. Again, we're presuming, but for now, we have confirmed that there is $500,000 in prize money for majors this year, at the very least. And in 
Katowice, there was a peak concurrent player base count for CSGO back in March, which was 595,439 players. And then this increased to 677,701 players in May. So we're having an 84% increase in the player base. That's almost double the player base, right? From last year, almost. And yet Valve still supplying the same amount of money. Now, yes, I can understand that sticker sales would have increased because more players would have fueled into the game and they would have bought more stickers for the Pick'em Challenge. But when you look at the stat, which is one and a half million dollars. Now it was over one and a half million, but I don't think it was more than two million because Valve probably would have said over $2 million as opposed to over $1.5 million. So if we're going off the $1.5 million, that's spread across 16 teams, because there's 16 teams in a major, and that's approximately $100,000 per team, but if it's off $1.5 million, that's $93,750 per team. And that's a lot, but it's not really as much as Dota 2 has. Now, considering that we have 670,000 players concurrently playing the game at least, you know, as a peak number for the year, early in the year too. You would think Valve would add a little more money in, right? Well, who knows, DreamHack Winter might have $500,000 up for grabs and now it's $1 million for the entire year. But, we're just going off numbers here and if Valve makes only $750,000 of prize money, plus the sticker money, then nothing's really changed from last year other than maybe the sticker money so let's compare this to dota 2 so dota 2 back in july of 2014 had the international and the total prize money for that was pretty much 11 million dollars it's actually 10.9 million but we'll, we'll say you know 11 million dollars for the sake of it there was 19 teams in that tournament now the peak player count for dota 2 was 875,000 in July. I understand, it's a much bigger number. But in March of 2014, when Valve actually announced the International for 2014 for Dota 2, the peak player count for Dota 2 concurrently was 698,000. So that's really close to what Valve has seen now for CSGO. And yet, there's a higher prize pool up for grabs in one tournament overall compared to the three majors of CSGO just all together. Now, I'm going to put this into perspective for you if you don't believe me. But simply put, CSGO is at a severe disadvantage. And here's why. If we made the total money available for CSGO in three majors, 7.75 million. That means that the average sticker money from each tournament is $2.33 million for one tournament each. So, you know, if Katowice got 2.33 and then, you know, Cologne got 2.33 and then DreamHack Winter got 2.33, you know, that's a bigger number than what Valve's put out there now, right? And I'm accounting for growth. Plus the $250,000 for each major tournament, so times that by three, that's 750000 That's still too low, and it can't match Dota 2's international prize pool for 2014. Now, even though CSGO has held consistent numbers close to what Dota 2 had and could raise, or the fact that CSGO could raise more money but simply won't, the problem, I believe, and really does probably lie in the fact that Valve hasn't made it rewarding enough to purchase something towards teams in CSGO. Either that, or they're not giving enough money as a share to teams. So in Dota 2, for the 2014 International, they had a compendium up for grabs, which players could buy. Each one was $2.50 each, so that's the cost of a key, and I believe the entire $2.50 was added to the prize pool. Um, so first of all, that's a much better system than what CSGO has. I believe it's Either 15% of the sticker money goes to to uh, teams, either that or even 50%, but that's still not 100%, so that's the first thing you have to understand. Um, and second of all, we have the Pick'em Challenge, which I really do believe isn't inviting enough 
to make people buy stickers at all. I mean, the compendium, I think, for this year, gives you a shot at getting some limited items. But the Pick'em Challenge, all it does is give you a, a trophy, which no one really cares about. So, I don't really see how that's fair. And the reason why I can illustrate this is purely because I'm the prime example of a player that's really dedicated to CSGO. You know, I have over 1,700 hours of it. I've watched probably over 2,000 hours of CSGO streams. And I hardly purchased any stickers last year. Now, you're probably thinking... You don't have money, you don't love any teams. I bought about five stickers last year for Vox. Or it was either Vox and like LGB and um, maybe Fnatic. It was it was like, you know, three, four teams or something. You know, I actually wanted to support those teams. But really, I stuck them on guns or I sold them later on the market for more profit. You know, it wasn't really like I bought them for Pick'em. And I didn't even do Pick'em because it's a waste of time. There's no reason to do it. So, you know, unless you really want that trophy, but then again, that trophy really means nothing, and it's it's not really that cool looking. So, yeah, I don't really see the point to it. So, I think if Valve really want to make CS:GO excel as an esport and you know pour more money into it, then I think they need to pour more solutions into making the prize pool increase. So, I thought of a couple of ways. Some of these aren't fair, I understand that, and I'll explain, but that's okay. So the first one, it's really not fair, but we'll go anyway. So you create a case that features a weapon skin that is directly related to a team. Now, many people have said this, but I just wanted to highlight a couple of things if, if Valve's listening, which is that most organizations such as Nip, Fnatic, Titan, already have designs on the workshop that can be put into these cases. I mean, you literally don't even have to make some of these teams make skins. And if you're saying, oh, then they have to employ some designer and it's costing too much money. Look, if you paid someone $2,000 to make a weapon skin for you for a major, you're probably going to make it back just because off the sticker money alone, these are stickers, not skins, stickers. They're making $93,000 at least, you know? So, if you make 90 grand profit, it's worth it. Anyway, so the one idea is to take one item from each team and give them an equal chance of dropping in a special case. So, you know, each of these skins can show off your team spirit. So, if you love Nip, you can buy the Nip, you can buy a case and unbox the Nip skin and then use it. And then, you know, the money from that case goes to the team. Now, I understand that that can be unfair because there are some teams with less fans. So, you know, I got a solution to that. The other idea is to tier the skins. So the Legends teams, the teams that made the round of eight or the top eight last major, are the higher tiered skins. And they'll probably have more fans, so more people want to get them. So more people probably want Nip stickers. They probably want Envy stickers. They probably want... Fanatic stickers, so you make those, you know, the higher tiered stickers that drop a lot less and are a lot rarer and will have a lot more worth on the market. And then you make the money from the cases evenly distributed throughout the teams, like the stickers are now. Um, you know, I believe that this will probably make way more money for teams, way more money for Valve, so I don't see why they wouldn't do it. The higher tiered skins will be valued a lot more and people want to unbox them. But on top of that, if you make it so that in either of these circumstances that the skins are time limited, as in they don't drop again after the event is over and you can't get the boxes again, then these skins will be highly valued. Thus leading to people wanting to buy these one-time skins and keeping them to gather value on the market. I mean, look at, you know, the the drops from uh, Cobblestone, you know. Those keep their value for a very long time and sometimes even increase because people want Dragon Laws. So just imagine if you can get time-limited team skins, you know. People will want these. And as a result, you know, if you make everyone get at least one case drop from watching, you know, the tournament, 
then, or even before leading up to, then you'll see the money pour in because people already buy cases and stuff and they go nutty for them. But imagine if it's time limited and it's, you know, for a team, you know, it has a higher purpose to it. People will unbox more. The other way, other than a box, would be to make a contract system in CSGO, much like TF2. But make it where you buy a contract book, which is a bit like the compendium, and you finish some missions that help you get some some skins. Uh, these don't have to be team skins; they can be skins that are, you know, made by Valve or whatever. You know, and once again, you can get these skins from the contract book, which each player pays two dollars fifty for, and the money from the the contract book goes towards the prize pool, or towards you know the skin pool instead of stickers and each time you finish a mission you get a skin now you can name some of these after you know teams from both the legends and the challenges so teams like nip can have a mission where you've got to get some kills and casual matches as the last man standing you know so you can feel like you know get right wood in like a clutch situation or, you, you know, teams like Na'Vi can have, you know, a famous AWP mission after Guardian, etc. You know, you, you can be really creative with this idea. And not only will this engage the player with the teams and make them feel like, you know, they're, they're first of all gaining some in-game experience, but they're also having some fun themselves and they can relate to what the players do and some of the roles of the players, you know. They also get some cool skins. I mean, right now, I, I think the mission system is really poor by Valve for, to make it like one drop a week to get a, um, um, a skin from missions or from experience from your leveling up, which is just stupid. But, you know, this time through missions, you can actually get skins. So people that are a lot better at the game can get skins a lot quicker etc you know these are all really good things i mean i personally rate skins over stickers in value any day and most of the market does too you know there are a few stickers that are really high up but you know that's not the point and also again if you make these these drops you know time sensitive leading up to the event and then after that you can't get them again you know people will farm these missions they'll, they'll sit there doing these missions daily and they'll want these skins and if especially if they're rare skins that drop very you know limited you're gonna have a lot of people wanting to buy this contract book um you know and on top of that you can keep pick them in there if you want you can put pick them in the contract book make it free to people and uh put in a pick em trophy so you can still keep pick them if you really want and even have stickers still in the game but I think, you know, that's one other solution that we can fall back on. Now, don't get me wrong, everyone loves team stickers, and I personally still think they should stay, but Valve just isn't very creative right now with raising money for teams and giving more support, you know? I think the fans, player base, and spectators of CSGO genuinely love the players and want to support them a lot more. So with these solutions, you can create a more sustainable source of income for teams and raise even more revenue for both teams and Valve itself, as there is a more compelling reason to give your money over. You know, the most important part of why Pick'em fails is that, well, after you buy the stickers and finish the Pick'em, there is no reason to really keep purchasing stickers unless you want to stick one on a gun. But even then, you know, if you have limited skins, you know, you can only stick, like, four stickers on each gun. After that, they're kind of useless. Um, you know, I personally also think that some of the stickers look really good, too, like the Katowice 2014 team stickers and, you know... If you keep the looks of, you know, most of the Katowice stickers into the other majors, then you're going to have a lot more successful sticker sales. So, as a result, there is really no compulsion to keep buying stickers right now. But with these ideas, the compulsion still lies there. On top of the fact that people want these limited edition team exclusive skins that you can really make profit off of, and on top of that, you can show it off. And then on top of that, 
you're supporting the team. I mean, these are just really simple ideas that I think Valve can take on board and actually put into practice and have a lot of success with. I mean, any team can really do this again from, you know, you spend $2,000, hire a skin designer, you know, get a skin through them, put it in a box and you'll profit like $80,000, you know? So I don't know why they're not doing it, but they should. Really, they should, because CSGO has grown a lot, and it's getting numbers pretty close to what Dota 2 has, especially at the time of the international, and currently, we're nowhere near the amount of money. Now, I know what you're thinking. CSGO players make a lot more money off other tournaments, and I agree with that. I'm not saying the support is low, but I'm saying Valve isn't doing as much as they could be doing. And that's what I really wanted to highlight. I personally believe, though, that Valve's doing a great job. You know, some game companies don't even do this for their games. And it's it's amazing that Valve does it. So I thank them for everything that they're doing now. But I personally believe they can be doing a lot more. I'm not saying they should lock out and, you know, stop having other third-party tournaments like Riot's doing. Because I think that's personally stupid. It's the dumbest thing that you could ever do. But I think if Valve wants to really, you know, get a lot more teams to have a lot more fun, then, you know, have some skins in there. I understand that the belief behind the workshop was that, you know, some people could in the community could make skins. And I'm not saying that those opportunities still don't, you know, lie in the fact of that. But, I mean, there are designers out there making skins for teams. I mean, just do it, you know, just do it. It's only one, like, three times a year, you know, it's a, it's like a one-off kind of thing. You can still make the Chroma cases and the Falchion cases and whatever the next Operation cases and put community skins in that, etc. You know, I'm not saying to limit the options, I'm saying to expand them. And if you expand them, you're going to expand the scene of the game. So, that's all I really had to say today. If you enjoyed the video, have any opinions, you know, like or dislike the video, whatever. You know, subscribe to me. I don't care. I just really made this video because I thought it was, you know, something that really needed to be highlighted. Anyway, peace out, guys.